morning, Thomas Porter here, Porter Barnwood. So in the last episode, you saw us pick the slab for Mark and Trish. Today, we're gonna cut it down to size and I'm gonna start servicing it. Porter Barnwood is a reclaimed materials supplier, but we're also a full custom shop. We have a wood shop, metal shop, a finish shop, and even contracting teams to get the job done. So I'm gonna cut this down to about seven feet to start. I wanna use this, this really cool knot right here kind of curve around the corner a little bit. So we're just gonna fade it in. And I'm only going 16 inches back. If you can see that, it's gonna look really cool. Always wear eye protection. Slabs when they're drying they curve a little bit and move. Even if you got them stickered and stacked and everything, they still kind of shrink a little bit and move when they're drying. So we've got to flatten this out just as flat as flat can be now that it's nice and dry. And the best way to do that in here is in the CNC. So I'm gonna throw it on there. So I just set up the slab on the spoil board on the CNC and I just started the program and I'm running it a little slow just to let it get the first surface going. Go ahead and take this over to the saw and cut this one down to where we needed it to be, which was the 16 inches max. Right there. All right, so I've got a line to follow now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut down this line. I don't have to be super exacting. I'll probably be within about an eighth of an inch just eyeballing it here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to the Y-belt sander and give it a Give it a nice sand. I just want to keep running it until I get rid of some of these lines. All right, we're done. I got to tape up this hole. I'm going to blow it out with an air gun first. I'm going to fill this up with, uh, with a resin and grounds, a uh, two-part resin and coffee grounds mixture so it looks natural. It looks like it's the bark or something like that. I'm using some Gorilla Tape. It's good stuff. This particular one I'm using is the Bondo fiberglass resin. The reason I like using the fiberglass resin instead of an epoxy is because I can sand it better. It's quicker and uh, the mix is a lot easier to get. And I'm gonna fill it all the way to the top. I want this to be like a a mud consistency. About like that. I'm gonna pour it in. It looks like it's not gonna go in there, but you'll see it start to sink. And whatever little cracks we can't get with this fiberglass resin, we'll get with wood filler. And one last little secret. I like to take this and just cover it with coffee grounds. That way, if it does sink and I've got the coffee grounds, it's right there on the surface. And now this is all dry and there's a big giant cake that I gotta get off there. So I'm gonna take that off with a belt sander. But before I even do that, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all this bark. What happens is underneath the bark is this gorgeous texture. And we're gonna try to keep as much of that as we can, but still keep it smooth to the touch. Now it's time to go ahead and take the belt sander. The fastest way to get rid of this stuff is with a belt sander, but you gotta be careful not to create divots. You don't have to resurface this again. So I'm gonna grab onto it. You gotta hold on tight because it likes to race away. And keep it moving. I'm trying to go with the grain to keep from having to redo any sanding on it later. So as you can see, that filled up the hole really nicely, but I'm gonna blow it out. There's a couple little spots I'm gonna need to fill in with some black fill. Get in here, and I've taken this wood filler. I really like this one that we get from Home Depot. It's a floor filler. I'm gonna smush it down in there, kind of force it. This works great for tiny stuff. You can't do large areas with it. You really gotta only do small little holes and cracks and things like that, but it's good for getting down into those. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this off. It's dry enough now that I should be all right. keep this totally flat. 
You spend more time sanding than doing anything else in the wood shop. Now, I think I need to get a little freestyle on this with a pencil. I think I'll take it over to the bandsaw and just do it. So this part should be longer. It's a, yeah, I like that. So now we gotta fake it. This is really, really aggressive sandpaper. I'm gonna try to mimic the angle that's in the other part. The other thing to do is to try to find natural curves and things in the wood that you can use to accentuate it to make it mimic the live edge. Right here I've got some faulting. I'm gonna dig in a little bit deeper right here and make a little ridge. That way it looks like it's original, it follows this curve, looks natural. All right, now I'm gonna wire wheel it. The reason I'm gonna wire wheel it is so that I can get some of these little lines and striations and stuff that are natural wood back into it now that I've roughed it up with this stuff before I sand it. this over, get rid of this tape and sand the bottom before I go to final sanding. Just gonna round that edge over by hand. So we don't have a knife sharp edge for people to cut themselves on. Yeah, that's nice. In the next episode, we're gonna take the live edge slab and turn it into four shelves.